to the International School of the Peninsula in Palo Alto. And my teacher, Ms. Smith, and I have been working on this piece, called, which I named Myth of Apollonia. And I was inspired by the book of Galera's Book of Greek Myths, which, which is a book we studied in class. Once in ancient Greece, in the scenic western coastal city of Apollonia, a beautiful peasant maiden lived with her family. Her parents believed that she was so beautiful that they named her after their beautiful city, Apollonia. They thought her so beautiful indeed that they told her she were more pretty than the famous Persephone, and even Helen, who was the most beautiful woman on earth. This was not wise for numerous reasons. Apollonia grew to think that she could compare herself to the gods, and she also became very boastful and bossy. In addition to her beauty, she was overconfident because of her amazing cooking skills. Everyone in the town agreed that her cooking was so delicious that it must be like the ambrosia eaten by the gods. And once again, she grew to think that she could compare herself to them. After she had completed school, she chose to work as head chef at the local inn. Travelers from miles around would come specially for a meal she would prepare herself. Zeus, mighty king of gods, had heard the stories of a beautiful maiden who was also an excellent cook. Thus, when one of Zeus's long missions took him near the city of Apollonia, the powerful lord decided to stop at the inn and enjoy one of the famous meals cooked by the girl. However, Zeus knew that he could not show himself in his true form, so he disguised himself as a human, as he did on countless other occasions. Approaching the inn, he saw a lovely girl in the garden harvesting vegetables to use in the meal he would be, she would be preparing. He was immediately struck by her beauty. As Apollonia returned to the back door of the inn, Zeus walked inside the cozy hut to place his order. When the meal arrived, Apollonia herself served it. Zeus was both overwhelmed by the delicious food and by her loveliness. When finished, he demanded that Apollonia immediately pack her things and accompany him to Mount Olympus to cook for the gods and to always be near him. However, Zeus knew, based on past experience, that his wife Hera would greatly despise him bringing yet another maiden to Mount Olympus. Thus, Zeus pulled out from his golden cloak a black mask and instructed Apollonia to wear it when they arrived on Mount Olympus. She was happy to go, but she was so arrogant that she truly believed that her place was among the gods. Upon, upon arriving at Mount Olympus, Apollonia was amazed to see the goddesses of the seasons part the clouds to reveal the, most, the biggest and most beautiful place that Apollonia had ever seen, even more amazing than she had ever imagined. It was more majestic than any temple on earth, with columns made of pure, sparkling gold. Of course, no, more, no mortal could enter this amazing place without the permission of one of the gods, and Apollonia felt that she was better than all other humans that she was being invited inside. She put on her black mask just as Zeus had requested. Hera arrived to welcome Zeus back from his mission, but saw that he was accompanied by a mysterious girl. While immediately suspicious and outrageously angry, Hera was a bit relieved to see that the girl was simply wearing a black mask and had not been transformed into a cow, as Zeus had previously done to a poor girl named, by the name of Io. Zeus tried to explain that he had brought the girl simply to be the chef to the gods. Hera looked at him questioningly. Don't you know that Hestia cooks fine nectar and ambrosia for us? Why do we need someone else to cook? She has no need of a helper. Zeus quickly explained that this girl could make much better food, even better than Hestia's ambrosia. Hera was furious and immediately refused to let the girl inside. But Apollonia boldly stepped in and demanded a cooking competition with Hestia. Apollonia declared that, once a single spoonful of my soup, or the tiniest morsel of a meal I prepared passes your lips, Hestia's ambrosia and nectar will taste like mud, and you will never wish for it again. Zeus agreed to the cooking competition, and even Hera could not oppose him. Hera was amazed that Zeus could consider such a preposterous plan, and suspected that she, he must be playing a trick on her. So she decided to go along with the plan, knowing that the gods would never give up the ambrosia and nectar which keeps them immortal. The competition was held that very evening. Hera told Hestia not to worry, and to just prepare her usual dinner. Hestia gladly agreed to the plan, since she was one of the nicest and most generous of the goddesses, even giving up her own throne for Dionysus. Hera announced the first course. The gods were all seated at their own thrones, with an elegant table set in front of them. Athena, goddess of wisdom, knew that such a competition was foolish and unwise. But like all the other gods, she was curious to try the food that this mysterious stranger would prepare. The gods see and smelled the familiar scent of Hestia's golden nectar floating from the hearth, but from the kitchen came a more intriguing smell. 
Apollonia appeared at the, at, as the doors from the kitchen swung open, bearing a platter upon which a dozen bowls were filled with the most delicately, re oh, the most delicately re flavored refreshing broth. Dionysus, the god of wine who could appreciate fine beverages, proclaimed that Apollonia's soup was better than Hestia's nectar, and all of the gods, even Hera, had to agree. Upon hearing this, Apollonia grew very proud and confident. She loudly proclaimed that she would surely win the next contest, because the main meal that she would prepare was better than anything on earth or on Olympus. For the, for the main course, Apollonia went into Hera's own private garden to harvest the fresh best, best, well, sorry, to harvest the fresh tomatoes growing there. Hera had ordered her gardener to plant tomatoes in her garden because she thought the bright red gloves were cheerful, but she never dreamed that they could be food. Apollonia boldly plucked some of these brilliant red tomatoes and prepared the freshest tomato sauce served with the most del delicious pasta that she made by hand. It was a meal that anyone would love. Demeter, goddess of, the, goddess of the harvest, was curious to know how these little things that she had nurtured over time would taste. Hestia simply chopped up some ambrosia, and while it was delicious as it usually was, it could not compete with the divine flavors of Apollonia's freshly prepared meal. Again, Zeus proclaimed that the main course prepared by Apollonia was far more enchanting than Hestia's usual ambrosia. And once again, Apollonia boasted that she was going to win the contest and should become the next new goddess. Athena and Hera and Athena now became very alarmed. Athena took Hera aside and told her that Apollonia could not be permitted to win the contest, for if the gods stopped eating their magical ambrosia and nectar, they would lose their immortality. Hera agreed that this must not be allowed to happen, and she ran after Apollonia, who had once again been bold enough to venture into Hera's own private garden. There, Hera saw that Apollonia had harvested many of Hera's own exquisite golden apples and was washing them in the garden stream. She was planning to use these apples in a delightfully sweet and unusual dessert for the gods. Hera was furious. Hera demanded that Apollonia remove her black mask and reveal herself. Apollonia replied that while Hera would surely be jealous of Apollonia's great beauty, she would not remove the mask until she had won the competition. Next, Apollonia arrived that she would surely win the dessert course, just as she had won the other two courses. Apollonia returned to the garden stream, where she continued washing the golden apples for use in the final course. She was planning to make her famous apple tart with cinnamon and brown sugar. Everyone who had ever tasted it had declared her moist and tender apple tart to be the most delicious dessert. Enraged at the girl's rudeness, Hera summoned up all her mighty powers and declared that the girl and all her descendants would always be punished. From that moment, the girl and her descendants would always be forced to wear a black mask, which they could never remove. Moreover, they would never be able to eat any food unless they had washed it over and over. They would also have to scurry around at night, for they would be afraid to be seen. At these words, Hera transformed Apollonia into a raccoon. In shame and disgrace at seeing her new form, Apollonia scurried as fast as her new forepaws could carry her and fled to Mount Olympus forever. Since then, all of her offspring could never remove their black masks and found that they always had to wash their food. Apollonia learned, just like poor Arachne, who had been transformed into a spider, that it is unwise to be too bold and to challenge the gods. <laughs>